Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technician's Hour on this Wednesday, the 18th of October. Wow, we're into the second part of the month. Been a quick month. Dow's down 105 at 33,890. Now, let me just explain a couple of things. So, in this chart on the left, that's the daily chart. Here's the weekly chart. Here's the monthly chart. This, tower, this chart on the left shows you that there's an arch formation. If you follow the trajectory, if you follow the visuals of this MACD, the moving average convergence, look at this pattern right here in the, in the Dow itself. Look at the red line and that just shows you the red and green lines just show you how the pattern mimics if you're looking at the slow stochastic at the bottom here it's the same thing so it, it mimics the pattern but wait a minute this low that was made here in august and this low that's been made here in october wait the price is way lower but you don't see that in the stochastic why because it's a, it's a boundary between 100 percent and 80 and and zero percent if you look at this pink nine period exponential moving average, it, it the pink means that the nine crossed the 14 and it went negative and has been negative for some time since the middle of September. And just yesterday it turned green and today it's still green and Dow's down 79. So what I'm looking at here is the chance that this arch formation, which very often fails at a peak A or a B, that's the first or second peak, alphabetize them A, B, C, D on the way up, or A, B, C, D on the way down. Uh, each higher high gets this new letter. But in actual fact, this B is just about to give a confirmation either of a pink when it turns down again of a continuation of the arch formation. Remember, this is what we're always looking at, the pattern that I always talk about, the lowercase H comes straight down, rallies, and then rolls over. But in this particular case, I, I would say to you that the Dow is holding pretty well. So within that context, this is the daily chart. The weekly chart is still pink. In other words, the nine period moving average is still negative. Monthly chart is still green. And those are the three big time frames that we're looking at. So in the daily chart, if the Dow starts to drop below 32,600, that's it. Just be really careful because this is that pattern that says a rolling over could give you the pattern that I call the dreaded edge because it goes and retests the bottom, which would be a 32,846. At this particular point, this 200 period moving average right here, I've just highlighted. You see the dots, this is the line right here. It's holding very nicely, but it's also a magnet line. And one, two, three, four, five, six this is the seventh session in a row where this 200 period moving average has been touched, either on the way up or the way down. So this makes it really important. I want to go through that right now just to say that even though with all the negatives that we are hearing about and the other thing was yesterday, downgrading of the uh, semiconductors, particular stocks in, uh, you know, like NVIDIA, um, the, the semiconductor is actually holding very well. Now let me just give you out the overall picture that I have for subscribers to the opening call. Using technical analysis, on the 1st of August at 35,679, we went short within the context of having much longer, long, longer term longs. That's from October of, uh, that's from March of 2020 and the low of the exact day of the low on um, October in 2022. So this is a, in the shorter term, this is, a, this is a trajectory that we've been anticipating. We're still holding that short. But at the same time, we've got aggressively long, a very small, posi a, a small position. We've taken some profits uh, just the day before the low of 32,846 because the, the oversold conditions say that we should have a rally. My anticipation is that we are still going to do some testing of the lower range. And that's just make it as simple as possible. 
And that makes today and the next day, and today and tomorrow, I'd say even going into Friday, really important because, as I say, uh, closing below 33,600, 33,500 support says, yeah, probably we're on our way down now rather than holding up quite well. Let me just quickly go through this and then I'll do all these different things. And then I've got questions that I, I said I would answer today from uh, Tiger, Tiger listeners. Now, the S&P is down 23 at 4350. Uh, once again, all the activity has been above the uh, 14 and 9 period moving averages uh, for the last uh, week or so. And that's good. But you have got an S, meaning that the S&P weekly chart has gone to a, a sell signal based on the 9 period moving average under the 14 period moving average. Not a sell mode, just a sell signal at this point. Monthly chart is still holding well. QQQ, that's the index 100. Uh, trading, and I should mention that we do have an aggressively long position, taking nice, nice gains, short-term gains, uh, just as we did with the aggressive uh, long UDOW, the Dow. But in this particular instance, I'm anticipating this is going to get stopped out much sooner. But it's down one uh, Qs are down one eight ninety two at three sixty six point two seven. And yet the technicals are still holding pretty well. The MACD is good. Stochastic went under 80% again. And the 9 period moving average, um, as I say, is above the 14. And the on-balance volume is at 73% uh, under the 80%. So we don't have – and this, this downtrend, you see these two lines here, I call them the inside track repellent line because they keep repelling the price. Got repelled again. So uh, the weekly chart is still pretty good. The daily chart is okay, but I'm watching it very closely. Let's just go to the IWM, which is the Russell 2000 small caps, just struggling. These small caps, at some point, I'm sure you'll get a good rally, but it just hasn't happened yet. Now, let's also look at the, the SMHs, which is the semis. So my rule of thumb is wherever the semis go, the, the, the market usually follows. And this particular case, it's been in a downtrend, a down channel, actually, a perfect down channel. Um, and it's pulling back. It's down 2.80 right now at 145.52. Not yet breaking down in the 9 period moving average. is still positive. But that weekly chart, remember I spoke about this a while back and I said, I'm anticipating that this green 9 period moving average is going to turn pink and that the semiconductors, uh, as a kind of a heads up, are going to tell us about the general market. And that's why overall I'm still looking at a, a kind of a bearish scenario, very short term oversold conditions being worked off. But wait a minute, you've got gold. Gold, the harbinger of fear, is trading up 33 at 1969. Uh, it's a good year. And here we are on the weekly chart, which is looking very, very poor. Uh, in fact, if it wasn't for this outbreak of war in the Middle East, I think gold would have been on its way down much lower. But here it is, running very strongly. It's up 33 at 1968, above the 200 period moving average, which was fabulous resistance. Just, I mean, you could use that as a benchmark for a reversal to the downside. Now it's breaking decisively today to the upside. And that means that this level of, let me just check, 1953, we've got a break coming up. We've got questions uh, coming up about certain stocks, including Charles Schwab. Uh, Broadcom, some other different like Chapter High Conditions Hour. Now down, check it out, right? Here. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back, and because I was about to just finish up a couple of the um, indices and the um, some commodities, let me just do that now, and then I'll go to those questions. So natural gas... Natural gas NG at NG's continuous contract uh, price. Let me just show you this right now. <clears throat> at NG, there it is. Um, is up 0.01 at 3.09. The weekly chart tried to get out. Remember I said I want to see a decent close in the 350s and it went to just over 340 and it's pulled back and it's – it kind of back in the rectangle right now. So, and I've been anticipating that somewhere uh, in the October period, not sure just when, there should be a rally that holds to the upside. We haven't got that yet. But I had a question, and this is very interesting. So this applies, of course, to UNG. <clears throat> UNG is the same pattern because it's the United States Natural Gas Fund <laughs> stuck in that rectangle formation. But then I had a question uh, by one of our tigers – a moment ago, about FCG. And FCG is the First Trust National Gas ETF. And I'm looking at this and I'm saying, all right, let's just see what, what's going on here. First of all, I didn't know what FCG, I, I should have remembered. I looked at it many uh, weeks ago and then I completely forgot about it. Well, it's trading at 27.39, up 22 cents. This is a this looks like a gold chart, actually. Am I correct in saying FCG is First Trust Natural Gas? Yep, it is. I don't know why it's different, but this is very positive. The question is, should I add to it? And my answer is, even though it's spiraled to the upside from under 20 from the, from the 23 to 27, that's a, a four point gain. That's about a, what 17 percent, just in no time at all. I'm going to say, because you've already got it and you're talking about adding to it, I'd say yes, in, to, in a split position. You can add right here at 2741, and then you can add at about 2681. And on the whole thing, I'd have probably about a 26 stop on this particular position because it'll be a smaller position since you're adding to it. So, yes, normally I would not be doing this at a high, certainly a multi a month, it's almost a, a yearly high over a year ago. It was in, higher than that. It was up in the 30s. So I'm going to say yes because this is acting extremely well just based on the chart. So that was the question. Next question came in, which I was going to do as a sequence to looking at the commodities. I did that in the uh, uh, 
during the update at 10, at, uh, 10 o'clock for the Tiger Financial News Network market update. And now you've got the TLT down 75, and it's at 84.45. If you look at the TBT, it's still, it's just barely, let me just check, it's just a tad under the previous high. And I'm anticipating, based on the monthly chart, the weekly chart, that this is a GSAC, and there, there was an instant restart. Remember, that's a technique I call chat wave instant restart with, with the three bars. After a peak D, you go to leg E, and then you can you can call it. Oh, I've got that in there. Um, so this is an instant restart there. That peak D, you can see if I move the rectangle away, there it is, right there. So I'm going to put it in so you can see where it is and how it fits. Look, there it is. Oh, it's already there about three times because there are a couple of rectangles. Let me get rid of this one right here. Gone. Okay, so there you can see it. So that says this is an alternate account GCSC, and I'm anticipating that it goes to a leg D, and that will be over, over the daily. <clears throat> TBT is the ultra-short Lehman 20-year Treasury bond ETF, and 4331 was the high on the 6th of October. The high today is 42.95. I think it's going to go those extra pennies and go to a leg F. Then we're going to have to monitor it and see exactly what's happened. F in the daily and a D in the weekly chart, leg E in the monthly. Look at that breakout. Let me show you the chart here on the, long, uh, on, on the longer term scale. So you've got the monthly chart. We were once up here. I mean, we. I, I don't think this goes back far enough. No, it doesn't. It goes up into the uh, uh, almost 300 area. And here we are at 42. So uh, all I can say is that yields are starting to move aggressively higher. And they're above the support of 39.22, which is for a long-term resistance level. Just uh, we've got to be real careful here. So within that context of so the TLT, the question was on the TLT, and the TLT is pulled back. <clears throat> In the pattern that I was talking about just a moment ago, I can't go, go to it right now. Just got too many things going on in this laptop that I'm using remotely to my desktop back in my office. Okay, so the TLT 8489 was the low about nine nine bars ago, that's nine days ago, nine sessions ago. And I that's I think it's gonna just nick it to the downside and that's gonna be really important because the all the tech look the nine is look at that pink nine period moving under the fourteen. It's gonna take a tremendous amount to get it green again. You'd probably have to see the TLT, the Lehman iShare twenty year Treasury bond ETF trading in the eighty eight ninety two I'd say almost 90 before it returned green again. That's a big ask, especially in this environment. And as, as you've seen over the last week or so, um, anything that has to do with inflation seems to still be uh, bubbling up there. So we've got to be very careful. Although, look at this, DBA. Oh, so the question on the TLT is yes, I think we're very, we're very close to a big test of support. But you have to have patience because so far the momentum – is so uh, strong that to change the trajectory to the upside, it's going to take quite a lot. And if you're looking at the DBA, which is the DBA Agricultural Fund, I should say the subscribers are long in the 13s. It's already been up in the 23s, pulled back. And I, I said we're not going to do anything because it's just stuck in a range between 21 and 22. I don't know if it's really worth actually trading that. But here it is at 21.93, actually acting well after the, the, the grains, uh, corn, uh, wheat, soybean. Uh, they were very weak. Actually, let me just show you this here. Look, wheat is just coming off a bottom. It's not a big deal. Uh, in terms of chart, it's gone to a, a peak C, but it's really a very anemic. If you're looking at soybean, uh, soybeans are much better move, but it's still not very strong. Stopped at the 50 period moving average in leg B at uh, 1,300 and a quarter, up three and a half today. If you're looking at corn, uh, corn is that was the one that was acting, tried to act much better, couldn't do it. There it is, corn. Got it. Okay. 
That's that's already gone to peak C1, C2. This is acting way better than the others. And especially if you're looking at the monthly chart with this arch formation holding the base of support. So that corn is the better one. So that's DB agriculture. I'm just mentioning this because of, this is part of inflation. So now the question came in AVGA, AVGO, Avagio. That is uh, Avagio, which became was taken over by Broadcom, but they kept the symbol. I don't know why they kept the symbol. BRCM is a much easier symbol to remember when the title is called Broadcom Inc. Anyway, the question is, um, I'm in it. I can't remember offhand if it was at 80, 840 or 820. Um, and what if I think? I think it's in the trading range right now, and it's one of the better semis. I think it's actually worth taking a look at the couple of asking about the semis. So let's just go to that as soon as I return. Be back in a moment. But now, if I just quickly the tally right now. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument you have to practice sure but you also need excellent instruction from experts at TFNN you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis and it's not just dry tedious text either TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at tfnn.com or on tfnn's youtube channel and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv hi folks we're back so i to show you because this is live right now. The guy who bought this 200 period moving average is being the one minute ski mini chart. 
Isn't that amazing? It's like a sine wave. It goes above it, below it, above it, below it, below. And it went above it just a short while ago at 10, 15 to 10, 20. It screams up to the 43, 90s. And here it is. So 20 points up and 20 points down. And this is the midpoint right here. And now it should try to find some support in the 43, 73 area. But the speed with which it just came down looks to me like some bad news is going on there. Suddenly came out. We'll see what happens here. Oh, isn't this uh, when does, it's a Wednesday, isn't it? Wednesday, day? yeah. Isn't Wednesday when some kind of a, a crude oil or some some kind of report comes out. Anyway, we're looking at the Dow down 142. So you remember the SMHs, Broadcom is part of the SMHs. That's a Vagio, it's a symbol, AVGO. Um, we, I, I should just for clarification purposes, uh, 161.17 was the all-time high on the 31st of July. We're in just a, a, a less than two points above the November of 2021 high of 159.42 down to 83. Uh, this is the back in uh, July of last year, July, August or so. And then it turns up, it was that October, and then it turns up and goes from 83 to 150, 161.17. And we are sh the subscribers to Open Call, we are short the um, uh, semis from just over 159, still remaining short. Going to try to keep this as long as possible. We have had some trading positions in the SOXS, which is three times short. We went short at the same time, took lots of profits, and now we haven't done anything with it because it's just been in this wrecked, this uh, basically this down channel to the inside track repellent zone. And now the nine period moving average is still holding well. Now let's put that together with AVGO. AVGO, here we go. I wish they would. I always have to remember what the symbol is. I always remember symbols very well. But Broadcom was easy, BRCM. Now, Broadcom is the owner of uh, Avagio. It's been quite a while. Look at this rectangle formation. So the question is, I'm long, Mike said, and uh, I can't remember if he wanted to add to it. And I'm going to say, you, you are long in a position. Well, maybe that was your add-on position. I wouldn't do anything right now. I'm impressed that it's up 2.22 at 886.62. This is one of the better chart patterns, but the, the result of a long rectangle that starts off as a wide and then goes narrow because it goes so long, says that at some point it's going to take out the base of support, which is 800. So at this particular t point, as a trading position, if the market wasn't as weak as it is at just today, I would say to you, I'd probably add another little position because I think it's going to try for the eight, uh, 896 to, uh, to um, 905 area. But because of the situation as we see it right now, it's been the rally, the strength that it has even today, even yesterday with a big sharp pullback and closing towards the high with a long legged doji candle. I'm just going to say hold off. And on, the sh on this position that you just got in now, I would 868 is the 14 period exponential moving average support. The nine period moving average is at 876. Today's low is at 876. It, it, it used it as a springboard. But the day's young. If the market continues lower, I think it's going to drag this one low. Let's wait another day or two. In fact, I'll put it in today's Wednesday. I'll put it in for either Thursday or Friday. And we'll have a look at it again. I'm going to say just do nothing as it stands right now. If it wasn't market conditions, I would say this is one of those that wants to lead the market higher. It's, it, it can't do that right now because it's stuck in a range. It has made a leg D in the rectangle formation um, of the weekly chart. And this monthly chart is making a, a sideways consolidation. All the technicals in the monthly chart are very strong. That's your, your leading indicated because this is, this is your larger context of the tide shorter term tide says it's getting a little whippy and but it's holding very nicely and the daily said <clears throat> how it handles this new high oh i needed to look at this i wanted to put this into a longer term yes so because that was the starting point of your first peak, A, B, C, D, E, F, this could even be an alternate count G because it never took it out. I'm going to make this, just for the moment, an alternate count. Just all based, I'm not breaking any rules in the travel methodology. I'm just saying this is an alternate count. And I, I'd like to see that because, as I recall, the cup formations 
we're making slightly higher highs and slightly lower lows. And that just says that at some point, the momentum, the trajectory to the upside um, is going to run out if the stochastic, which is at now 72%, continues lower. Because remember, I like to say that all the textbooks suggest that over 80% is overbought. Overbought mean, means that it's it's stretched, it's too far stretched. And I say, no, no. If you're bullish, you want to see an 80% and higher on balance, um, sorry, um, stochastic, slow stochastic. So this just says to me, considering that the stochastic in the daily chart is pulled back, the price has held very well, and the 9 period moving average is over the 14. So, okay, as it stands right now, I'm just saying to you, I would do nothing. It's holding very well considering what's going on. When I started off, <clears throat> it was up 2.22. It's now up 0.45. What is the Dow doing? INDU must have pulled back even more, and I've typed in the wrong place. I'll type it in here. There we go. INDU. Yeah, now down 163. And as I say, this is the this is the moment that I said to subscribe to my opening call. Caution prevails. Why? Because this is at peak A or B. Watch closely because this is where you can start to see the rollover in the H pattern. Most importantly, the the nine is still very positive. Nine is positive, not very positive, but the MACD is positive and the stochastic is still at 82%. So that's holding very well in the Dow. Let's go to back to the uh, next question here, which is Schwab. So Schwab had good earnings, or at least part of the earnings were very good. Um, and I had a question uh, about Schwab, and the question was, is it time to have – we've we followed Schwab for a long time. Is it time to do anything? And I'm going to say, yes, it is. It is time to continue doing nothing because Schwab is down $1.65 at 52.06. And when I did my work last night, I was looking at the IAI, which is the – I we are still long from 45 back in 2020, and it's trading at 90.2. It's already been to 116. Um, so uh, we're just holding this. This is the iShares broker dealer and security. It had a pretty good move yesterday, but really not not the kind of move that I would have anticipated. And today it's down a dollar twenty one at ninety point twenty. And um, why is it just showing this? Oh, it just it's kind of static. But IBKR, which is the one that I use as a benchmark, IBK. Whoops, IBKR is the yeah I B. K R, and that is trading at uh, eighty two point seventy four down three seventy interactive broken gap down. How come it gap down? I'm not sure why it gap down, but it did gap down, and uh, that's just not a good sign. So I'm saying stay away from the swap right now. And interactive brokers, I need to show you the chart to get back. Uh, I did that, did that, did that, did that, and I did that. Yes, I've done both. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back, and if you look at the 10 minute charts of the E mini. Look at this 200 period moving average. Look at the way it, it curls around. It's like a sine wave over and under, over and under, over and under. And then what happens is, besides being a um, uh, 618 retracement to the upside, that coincides exactly with the 200 period moving average on that single leg A up. You'll see it better if I squeeze this. I wanted to show you the longer term of the 10 minute chart. Look at this. It goes straight to the line. And then it comes right back down. That's called the Eiffel Tower. Straight up, straight down. And uh, it looks like an uppercase A. And it is actually called an A, but it's an A minus because it failed. And what do we have now? We're having at the, the S&P down 31.5 in the E-mini. And uh, right here at the 30, what's the, what, 4360. Seven, I think it is. Yeah, 4367 area. This is exactly where I would anticipate based on just the visual one to one trajectory from that line to the nine period moving average and down again. This is exactly where there should be some attempt at a basing of support. But it's really important to see at the I think between quarter to one and one thirty this afternoon, it's going to be the big. If there's no decent rally to the upside to get off the low, we might close at the low of the day. Now, a question came in about FLR. This is Fleur. Fleur is in the ups. There it is, trading at thirty six point sixteen, uh, thirty six seventeen down dollar forty one. Fleur Corporation Energy Services Carbon Capture uh, LNG Green Chemicals etc. A lovely monthly chart, little V-shaped pattern there. <clears throat> and the weekly chart did the same thing, went to a peak D in a cup formation. Now what we're looking at is the daily chart from the peak D. I didn't put in, didn't have a chance, didn't even look at it. Has a, a cell signal, which was about to go to a cell mode when it suddenly popped up. I. So the question is, what about Fleur? And I would say this is in an area that right now should be doing very nicely, and it is. How it handles the monthly chart is going to be very important because 33 is the support level of the nine-period moving average. That we're at 36.11 right now. If it starts to go under that, it says decisively that you've got a now a rectangle formation 
with another U pattern possibly forming. This is the first one right here. Look, there's your U. And that month did finish last month, September, so I can put that in as a U. And I'm thinking that there's a chance that maybe a, one like this, so I'll, I'll keep this in here, there's something like that because it's held well. <clears throat> it's an area that if there is any activity at all, uh, certainly in the area with carbon, LNG, green chemicals, it should hold very nicely in this particular time frame. But here's your H pattern at a peak A, peak B. So once again, I'm saying, just like in the Dow and the, was it the S&P? No, the Dow and the QQQ, leg Bs and the S&P, I think, went to leg C in the daily. This is one we've got to monitor. Why? Stochastic's only at 68%. MACD's negative. Nine period moving average is positive, but is turning down. If it turns pink, it'll do that at about 35.30. So I'm just watching it. So the question is, what would I do <clears throat> on a shorter term position if you are long and you've had pretty good gains? I definitely take something for money management. I take a little bit off right now. If you just got in, I wouldn't risk anything because if it takes out the low of three, four days ago and that was the low of, what is that, 35.55, um, there's a good chance it's going to make the H pattern and go all the way down to the mid-34s. So I'd just be real careful um, on the shorter-term position. If you're long-term long, that's different altogether. Next question that came in is if I can find it. Yes. Could I look at BTC? This is the um, this is the futures, the Bitcoin futures continuous contract. I, for a while now, I've been saying, actually, ever since we were long and had fabulous gains in the GBTC, that's the Bitcoin fund now we're out of it we haven't we tried once or twice to get back in for short-term trades just didn't work out and i said we're, we're stepping aside we're done later in the year meaning 2023 i think there's going to be a really good chance that it has a much stronger rally but i have to wait so look what happened it had this spectacular chapman wave roman inverted roman candle green one uh three sessions ago the low was in the 27 no 26 24 is that the day? No, it hit 27.14. And it ran that same session, ran up to 30.36. <clears throat> and then it closed just below the halfway point of this entire candle with a very long-legged wick. My rule of thumb is within two to three sessions at any point if for, a, for a shorter time frame, Meaning on a day, this is a daily chart. So on a 120 minute chart, I'd say if 90 minutes it traded above 29.50, there's a there's a really good chance that it would test the high that was made in the 30 area. Uh, but if it takes out the low at any point, be very careful. But in fact, all it's done is it stayed in this range, and it's down point. Uh, it's down. 310 at 28,310 right now. At BTC is the, is the simple continuous contract. <clears throat> the 200 period moving average has been the sine wave up and down and up and down. It went there uh, that one day, three days ago, and then it's now back under it. That's your big resistance. $29 is your big resistance. So the question is, what should I do? And the answer is nothing. Probably I would say more likely short, but I'm, I, it's just not worth it because it moves so quickly. And it's, it's, I, I just I don't think it's worth it. I'd rather just step aside, have patience. I think there's going to be a move in this at some point, uh, but when it when it's going to be is very difficult to decipher. My time cycle said maybe by the end of October, early November, but that's just a, a visual time cycle. I haven't done any measured move. I'm just saying hold off on Bitcoin. Next question that came in is, if I can just find it. Yeah, could you just look at the GDX again like you've done every day? GDX. Yeah, so GDX is now red. It's down 11 cents to 29.43. Why? The only reason I can think of is this 200 period moving average is resistance. Let me see what gold is doing right now. Where's it pulled back to? Within a point, 
of the 1950s, 1959, 1958 is the 200 period exponential moving average. I mean, that's how, that's how important these things are. You think that it's just that the market doesn't know. The market doesn't have to know. But this is a look back period, 200 bars, in this case 200 days. And it becomes very important because it's like it's like an internal measurement that says this is, this is my uh, – the benchmark – for a break into the upside or the downside, and it's going to be that way, and it stays that way for a while. So, point, uh, sorry, uh, gold at this point is still fantastic, but it did fall back to the 250. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back for the uh, final segment, but let me just do this. The Dow's down almost 200. This is it. The reason why I said to subscribers to the opening call, just be real careful today. Even though we're long, I'm prepared to get stopped out of these uh, these trading long positions because there'd be nice profits. I'm not prepared to mess around. You want to see the stochastics at 82%. That's a good sign in the daily chart of the Dow. This becomes the rollover. And if we start to push underneath 33,600, 
uh, even that 500 level, that's that's going to be important because it means that you're now in the momentum to the downside. So just be real careful here. You'll see the same thing in the S&P. The S&P made a leg B yesterday. It extended up. Now let me just go through this, SPX.X. There it is. Now it's down 37. Um, still the uh, green, the 9 period moving average is green, but I'm just watching this very closely to say if ever this is going to be the moment to uh, start back to the upside. It does, if by 1, one o'clock, 1.30, uh, the Dow better be just only minus 50 or minus 80. Um, that'll be way better, and the S&P should be down only minus 20, maybe minus 18, and then we can see some kind of rally into the close. I don't know why there would be a rally into the close in this particular instance. That's it. And the VIX index, the volatil volatility index, here we go, trading at 1934. At any point this week, if the Dow is down tr sharply, triple digits, the S&P is down 60 or more, and the VIX index is trading above 2150, be very careful. And here it is, up a dollar forty-four at nineteen thirty-two. Just portion to watch for it right at this particular moment. And if we can survive the day quite nicely, that's a good sign. But just be really careful. Have a wonderful rest of the day. Stay tuned for Steve Rose and all the great programming here at TFNN. Check out my opening call daily newsletter. I'll see you tomorrow.